This is the Australian S&P share market uh, with the Bollinger Bands uh, widening out so that they can reach the next support level at 5,200. Perhaps the Bollinger Bands can be seen here, but perhaps, perhaps not. Um, but the problem is that with the first recession in 24 years coming, uh, then even at that support, things might not go well. There are various support levels and we need our politicians to start arranging for revenue, uh, otherwise we'll just go through from one to the next to the next. It's up to them and it's up to you to make sure that you harass them. Over a year ago I showed this diagram in the shop front of the vacant former Brooks shoe store in Griffith, New South Wales. At that time, the former government was boasting about no debt, that they had saved us from being affected by the great financial crisis, and that we were the envy of the developed world. This was showing that being the best of a bad lot is not a recipe for future success. This diagram from the Australian Bureau of Statistics showing Australian GDP growth um, really shows how the lack of revenue, revenue is uh, really putting us into trouble. This was held up by the mining boom and now we need revenue. Uh, we've got means of um, how we would uh, select it but um, not the government. Uh, this time with the first recession in 24 years lurking there are no funds to ward off the next GFC. Since producing uh, the, this diagram, the mining, mining boom, as we say, is no longer there to help, the most recent trend uh, should be stirring people to discuss their future with the person they plan to vote for in 2016. As a construction engineer who worked in four countries, I was responsible for project achievement determined by earned value less costs every working day. When I returned to Griffith and took after my mum, it was easy to be aware of the relationship of the financial status of Australia being determined by revenue, less costs. My first correspondence from Ian McFarlane included uh, his pride in Australia supporting, uh, exporting $300 billion in 2012. I told him that we needed exports of 450 billion. Following discussions with the chief economist and other members of the Department of, of Industry, I presented this diagram showing figures around 5% higher for each of the next three years, which is what they were projecting. The situation implied debt, even though the Labor government was claiming a balanced budget. When there was a change of government, there was revelation of an uncovered debt. I show that as a dotted line. So whereas they were showing no debt, it was in here. For the new government, insufficient revenue led to increasing debt. Whether Joe Hockey, Tony Abbott and others were claiming to balance the budget in 2000, and 16. The implied figures from the Department of Industry gave me the confidence to send this diagram to my federal member, Michael McCormack, who was a parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Finance. I sent that on the 16th of May. It said that balancing the budget by 2016 was impossible. But he did not pass it on. Many months after that, Joe Hockey admitted that a budget surplus could be 20 years away, well into the future. Having sufficient revenue is the key. If revenue had increased as shown, the slope of the debt curve would gradually become less prominent as shown. Previous film clip showed how GDP growth is falling. 
what Joe needs to know is that the, there is a relationship between what we need and the revenue that we've got. This minus that equals ever-increasing slope of the debt curve. As debt increases, the amount of interest that we pay increases. Joe has said that we have to borrow from overseas. Currently we can borrow at extraordinarily low interest rates. My prediction is that the big house of cards is going to fall in September. As soon as that happens, uh, interest rates all over the world will go up. So whatever debt we've got, uh, then uh, the, the interest rate will go up by a huge amount, all paid by taxpayers. We have to get Joe to understand that revenue is the key. He has to listen to people who have the ideas of how we can do it. In next year, 2016, um, this is when um, car making ceases and all of the support industries um, of the um, car industry, uh, then, then they will be closing as well. Um, we, we could be heading way down here and with this going way up there. Joe Hockey claims that Australia has always needed money from overseas. I do not agree with him, but it certainly applies now. Uh, we desperately need Joe to find additional revenue uh, and to give examples, not just waffle. No hockey needs to consider additional revenue such as 1. Fix the dollar at 70 cents or less. 2. Selective tariffs starting perhaps with imported structural steel. 3. Zero tolerance of impurities in imported food and drink so that we will be growing our own products, not spending on cheap but extremely unhealthy imports. 4. Open the barrages at the lower lakes to return irrigation water to produce more food to export or for import replacement. 5. Use countervailing duty to save the Valencia orange industry to ensure that the ever-increasing imports of cancerous uh, uh, orange concentrate can be stopped then followed by increases of Australian growth and production. Six, stage infrastructure spending on the Bradfield scheme to divert water from the tropical north, which now all flows out to sea. Water can be used to allow drought-stricken cattle farmers uh, to stay on their properties and to earn for themselves and for exports. The headwaters of the rivers can produce irrigation water to allow further exports and import replacement. There are more examples. Tony Abbott, Joe Hockey and Barnaby Joyce should listen to the ordinary Australians. The Agricultural White Paper by Barnaby Joyce and uh, Tony Abbott uh, is a real con. It is leading to a, a, a bureaucratic death trap. The uh, the white paper was initiated by Barnaby Joyce, but it seems that Tony Abbott and Cabinet are the ones who are calling the shots. And so he's not coming to Barnaby Joyce, he's going to Morris Newman, who's a former banker. Morris Newman will be talking to these, this group three or four times a year, and then sending messages up to the big cheese, Tony Abbott. But when you're looking at all the things that he's looking at, manufacturing, agriculture, services, education, resources, and other, agriculture represents something like 2% of the total. So how much is agriculture going to be heard um, by Morris Newman? Even when we come to agriculture, then we've got forestry, HAL, and um, fishing. HAL is Horticultural Australia Limited, not-for-profit, industry-owned company. It works in partnership with Australia's horticultural industries to invest in research, development, marketing programs. 
it's got a whole myriad of things and yet the one that we will be counting on will be that portion that comes down through this very thin conduit into vegetables, nuts, tropical fruits, stone fruits, grapes, citrus. So we are one of just, this is looking at, if we're looking at bunch of oranges, we are just the one of a very small group here, which is one of a very small group there. But when we come down here, and those representing us, Citrus Australia and uh, Griffith and District citrus growers, are looking at naval oranges for export, not for Valencia oranges. So that this whole mishmash of things is, well, I guess it really summarised by the total. Centralism gone mad. Um, we'll probably put a whole uh, session on this particular thing. Greece and most other European countries are in a very bad way. Once the bankers have taken everything else they've got, uh, then they'll come in and get whatever gold they happen to have. Michael McCormack, you are the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Finance. Why will you um, not, as our member, debate these issues? Whatever gold we have, we want to be ours. One of my books, which has not yet been published, is Australia's Establishment Failing. The cover has not yet been agreed. The establishment would not communicate, but a breakthrough came when ACCC find a small Australian juice manufacturer for what I consider to be a relatively trivial infringement while completely ignoring the issues which have caused so much damage to the community uh, which continued after the opportunity for common sense in April 2012 was lost. I was looking for a chink in the armour of the establishment and I believe that has been found.